let's know about what Women Ovator is. Women Ovator, a virtual incubator for women, celebrates the triumph stories and records of passionate women who dare to innovate the world and honor them with awards and recognitions. It is a global virtual incubator for women supporting women entrepreneurs in our skilling operations domestically and internationally and creating distribution networks. Women leaders, professionals to be directors or become uh, job creators and women community leaders to be a game changer. Today, I have somebody who is game changer herself. Uh, welcome Miss Narula and uh, you know, thank you for being with us. She is a dear friend and India's leading career counselor and, co and college planner. Her counseling venture just got the best career guidance company award at the EdTech Awards 2020. And her biggest claim to fame is $45 million in scholarship uh, for her students over the last three years. That's a huge number. Very thrilled with respect to admissions in India and overseas and has been doing amazing interactive sessions for senior school students at schools across India. We welcome Ms. Narula and thank you for being with us. Thank you so much, Ashi. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, especially because I think Women Aveta is also very close to my heart and uh, Tripti Shingal as well, as well as, uh, so thank you so much for hosting me today. Oh, great. So uh, today we are going to talk about and we are going to take your guidance on the current uh, situation which has occurred in the edtech space. You know, a lot of students who are suffering, a lot of teachers who are suffering. There's a lot of suffering that has actually happened in during this COVID time. There's a lot of changes that has happened in this COVID time. Students are home. They are not able to go to schools. Teachers are teaching from their homes. Again, a very difficult situation that teachers are in. And the biggest problem that we're gonna talk about today and want your mentorship on is planning of students who were actually planning to go abroad for their studies, which has actually become a question mark for them. So what do you think in this current situation, you know, is it possible to go to abroad or not? Should they study in India or still plan to do so? So what, what are your views on this? Well, um, I think you've uh, you've set the ball rolling in the right way, Ashi. And I, my heart really goes out to all those parents and students. I'm also a mother myself. So when I see my daughter studying online all the time, uh, it is it is a bit of a uh, change from what where we were. At the same time, I so there are contrary views to this whole thing. At one level, there are families who have uh, welcomed this change and have actually. They say that my child has suddenly become more focused and he or she is being able to understand time management much better. And the school is also doing their best to kind of make sure that a lot of other activities are taking place. At another level, there are others who are, you know, really struggling. And I, I find that that's mostly in the younger age group between, yeah. let's say, 12 to easily 15 uh, or maybe even younger than that. They are obviously very perturbed by the kind of online time these children are spending. Absolutely. So all in all, I think today's debate is not so much about how much time they are getting to spend online, but it's more about how to go about planning or how to go about with your plans of life, even exactly. as we are going through these uncertain times. Yeah. So personally, I just find that life should go on because as right now we are talking uh, through this live session, life is moving right uh, time doesn't stop for anybody so would regardless of how things are moving we still have to keep on planning and putting little uh, let's say foundation stones uh, you know uh, under our children's uh, education and just seeing how they can move forward and and having said that i mean i'm from lsr myself so nothing against indian colleges universities uh, but i do want to throw some light on how we can juxtapose Indian education versus international education, and how can we see the, the certain very stark realities that we need to actually look at? Okay, at so point. as a parent, you just mentioned that you're a parent. So as a parent, will you really send your child to abroad for studies at this uh, point of situation that we are in? Uh, so mm -hmm. because a lot of parents, I'm sure, who are watching this video have this question all the time. 
who planned that your you know they have to send their child after eighth or after seventh or after graduation you know so every every parent has a it's in a dilemma now that should i take that step should i send him so far or not so what's your views as a parent to this so um i would say one as a parent and also as a counselor yeah as yeah. someone who has been involved with uh, some kind of an understanding of how things function internationally mm. um i would first want to say that uh, studying in india versus studying abroad is a dilemma that is not new okay it has not just happened this year it was yeah. always there this and they were always uh, you know trying to see which one's better so it frankly rests on a few things one in terms of academic rigor yeah there is a dilemma in terms of planning and and mapping academic rigor two is in terms of financial independence how much financial independence am i willing to give to my child at this stage or age of life three is in terms of personal growth some of us feel that you know personal growth is can only be achieved you see you you look at uh, students who go for boarding school for example yeah. hmm. there is a certain level of personal growth they go through versus day scholars or hmm. students who are you know tutored Staying or mentored at home hmm. essentially hmm. at the same time there are home school students who are yeah. you know who are phenomenal in terms of personal growth some of them yeah. fourth is in terms of emotional well being yeah so there are all these parameters that actually somewhere need to be considered if you were to ask me personally it is not about one size fits all it's not okay. about so uh, there are many ways in which you can actually map this out for yourself and i'm sure today we are going to touch upon some of those ways of okay. what are the ways to actually map it out okay mm -hmm. so with this we can come to a point that parents who are watching this who are in the dilemma that should they send their students their child abroad or not so for them yes its situation is same there might be more worse situations there can be a better situation so planning your student studies is one part of your uh, life and your planning so yes keep, you can continue with planning their careers abroad uh there is one very important question that comes to everybody's mind even students uh, parents everybody that uh, what courses we should opt for when we go abroad uh, should we go for uh, you know a course when when it, where it's more of technology driven where we know we have advanced um skills which are used abroad or we should go for something which is related to uh, you know law, law or politics because that's very different for every country so what do you suggest that uh, you know what kind of courses one should opt for when they're going abroad okay so uh, at an undergrad level things okay. are very different okay. versus at a masters level so let's talk of the undergrad for a moment okay at the undergrad level today's student or today's child needs to be interdisciplinary in their approach there is a reason why suddenly our own country is seeing the mushrooming of liberal arts colleges correct uh, these liberal arts colleges are today talking about not only learning biology and computer science and economics but they are also talking about learning film making and sports correct. management and philosophy correct. and all these other disciplines so in a lot of ways you are seeing this meshing of sorts of these disciplines take place and somewhere in order to become ready for these disciplines certainly while india does give you a few choices there are a number of choices overseas yeah so you see so when it see... comes to uh, special specialization of a particular course you would uh, you know you get better opportunities abroad and here you have uh, some courses no not really i'm not saying that at all actually Then... i'm saying the reverse frankly okay. you know so because uh, there are certain degrees okay um, i would say if you want a pinpointed answer then i would say degrees like medicine Okay. or maybe law or um, or to some extent architecture yeah and of course uh, certain engineering schools in the country yeah okay. engineering colleges in the country are definitely of repute yeah so okay. if you are aiming for some of these disciplines which are which i would i would want to put them in the bucket of specialized disciplines yeah so that's when you might want to look at india also as an option okay having said that there are certain disciplines where you require this intermingling of disciplines so therefore most colleges in india do not offer this intermingling if you go to a delhi university you are studying english honors or psychology honors or economics honors you're not studying an economics major with a photography minor 
yeah? correct or you're not doing bcom honors with the with your love for and exploring your love for let's say wildlife photography or something like that yeah so there are so many other things that if you are if you're a multifarious person in that sense you might want to create an option for yourself overseas yeah okay. for these kind of disciplines okay. when it comes to yeah okay, so uh, tell me something uh, charjla that if if i as an individual would uh, you know want to be want to add you know studies abroad to my career or my uh, my education what is the best way to do like in graduation or post graduation what do you prefer like uh, oh wow that's a tough question you know because uh, like i said it's not one size fits all it's also again not about uh, so i have a small litmus test which i thought towards the end of the session but let me just share that litmus test with you right away because i think uh, there are some people who are joining on the live and i can see that you know there is some activity so um the litmus test is more about figuring out whether i should send my child at undergrad or should, should i send him or her for post graduate studies and that is when you look at your child and you, know, you look at the student at one level you see okay what do you want to study i want to do fashion mom and i'm i'm really inclined towards designing and this is really my calling and everything else so you know there is interest okay. to some level you might know that your child has also the skill to handle this discipline okay the one thing you need to check is that whether he or she has the right attitude to learning okay. and in terms of attitude attitude is is something which is very crucial when it comes to international studies especially yeah because at one level you have to manage your own self you have to manage your time you have to manage your money you have to manage your resources everything so in a lot of ways your skill and your interest will not be enough to take you forward it has to be the right attitude to learning the right attitude to living and one okay. can work on it it is a it is a work in progress okay this is from the parent side from the uh, sorry this is from the student side hmm. from the parent side what is important is to look at your your resources and resources is not always money yeah resources is also if you if you have family at a certain location it could be even a bangalore for that matter you know you're sending your child even to another city outside of your main city so that could also be a consideration at your level if you have the resources and the child has the right attitude to learning alongside aptitude if there is a good match in these two things that's when you have passed the litmus test and you can actually become the wind beneath their wings and let them fly yeah uh, so that could happen at an undergrad level or it could happen at a postgrad understood now tell me something you know there are a lot of countries which we cons- we do not really consider safe for girls and there are a lot of countries where if i talk about girl education right so what do you suggest which countries are the safest uh, for abroad studies are you, you really asking me this question ashi because <laughs> india is the most notorious there <laughs> but still so, you know there are a lot of countries like uh, you know when when i look at something as arts or i look at something um, you know related to designing and all i you know singapore is one of the you know famous countries where uh, people can actually uh, be safe uh number 1 and can learn up to a very certain good amount of knowledge so uh similarly do you want to name any of the universities that you have worked with or you know and you feel that your students have really learned and grown at that particular you know and you still connected with with your students oh wow you know i um, i'm totally blessed in the sense that um i was uh, when i started university connection one of the first policy lines that we wrote was that we are never going to owe allegiance to any one college or university okay. as a result of that we have worked with a number of students and have just worked with families to help them get to a top place or the right college or university of their choice i've even had parents who walked in with a with a certain um, you know uh, budget in mind and have said ma'am mera to itna hi budget hai क्या मेरा बच्चा भी जा सकता है यू नो सो एंड वी मेड इट हैपन दैट्स व्हाई यू सी दोस 45 मिलियन डॉलर्स इन स्कॉलरशिप्स एज सच बिग नंबर इन अ बिग नंबर अ लॉट ऑफ वेज दीस चिल्ड्रन हैव ऑल बीन एसोसिएटेड टू नेम अ फ्यू सी एवरी मेट्रो स्टेशन इन द यूके हैज अ यूनिवर्सिटी बाय इट्स नेम या 
Uh, there are more than 3,000 plus colleges in the United States, which are phenomenal. Yeah. Our own country boasts of some amazing universities, including Delhi University or universities down south or yeah. certain other private setups. So um, frankly, I would say what is a good college fit for one student is different for the other. So I have a student studying at University of Southern California and also a student at a university college, uh, University of California, Berkeley, or at a King's College London, or at a London School of Economics. And these are all amazing places. And yeah. some of them are doing a liberal arts program, some are studying psychology, some are doing engineering. There are, however, some universities which are very specialized in what they do. So yeah. for example, the Parsons at the new school, uh, New York, is, is known for design and of Absolutely. course fashion and everything. Absolutely, you know? yes. So one would go there, you would go to also a place like Leiden University in Netherlands, which is recognized for its international relations program, especially because of its cro yeah. close proximity to the, to the International Court of Justice. So, you know, you students definitely go there. Recently, I had a, a couple of students going to the Geneva School of Diplomacy in Switzerland That's also right. and also to La Roche in Switzerland or any other, you know, so these are, uh, these are specialized places. And uh, that's where I think one of the things that really matters in deciding studying in India versus studying abroad is researching well. Research about, because yeah. we have certain universities top of mind. Ye achi college. Ye iski rank bahut achi hai. Sab Harvard jana chahte hai. You know, when students walk into my room and they say, I want to go to Harvard, Stanford, the first thing I do is take out the map of USA and say, please show me yeah. where it is, you know. So that research yeah. is very important to get a sense of where you want to finally go and what will be a good fit for you. So, so here we come with a question of every parent that where they should go. So uh, Miss Charushila Narula is the place where you need to really <laughs> go and get all your answers. She's doing amazing. She can get scholarships for your students and she can actually get the right place where your child actually fits in the most. Great. We are really impressed with what you do and the connections that wow. you have. So thank you for contributing so much in this. A mm -hmm. uh, major question. Uh, money. I know, plays a very important role when we think abroad. You know, it's not easy for every parent. It might be easy for an upper class, uh, you know, uh, family that yes they for for their name of sake or for their family reputation they have to send their students abroad but there are a lot of uh, middle class and lower class students uh, pay families you know who really want the right kind of education for their child for them money is first what they think of when they think of abroad uh, they know about the quality education they know about the uh, you know the kind of um, you know, opportunity that student might get, the child might get after that study. He might just get a job there, you know, or might just settle down. But at the same time, money plays a very important role. So how, how can we solve that problem for them? Wonderful. And it's a very important question, especially in these very uncertain times where uh, I think every penny counts, where people Absolutely. are saving. Absolutely. Um, I strongly believe that... Um, um, when you start early, this whole process of college planning, yeah. uh, half the job is actually taken care of with that itself. So what is early? According to me, by ninth or 10th, students, or rather ninth, you should start talking to your child about what are careers. Don't discuss okay. with them, what ke, kya banoge bade hoge. don't throw that, you know, googly at them. That's not a good thing to do. Just generally about careers, you know, what are careers, what do they do, what happens in life, what are, how does money roll and everything else. By 10th, you're getting them into a mode of, you know, start planning your trips also. When you plan a little trip abroad, a lot of people today do that, even when they go to a simple, you know, people are going to Japan and other such places also. Maybe yeah. tie it up with a little university visit, tie it up with a little visit, you know, even uh, to certain universities in our own country also. Correct. Start doing that so children understand, oh, after high school, there is something called college. Yeah. By the time they reach 11th, that's the time you start actually discussing with them what their goals and their dreams and their aspirations are essentially. And that's the time to start further planning essentially. Okay. So when it comes to planning in terms of money, 
there are a number and a number of scholarships available out there i really don't see any reason why parents should not be researching this early on you know it's just like the way you make investment plans for your child's marriage you start making investment check plans for your child's education so you also start teaching your kids how to plan for scholarships so there is a small equation that i'll give to you right now okay. and if there are any parents listening they can actually write it down it says cost of attendance cost of attendance which means at any college is equal to private finances private finance of education uh, sorry private finance plus scholarship plus financial aid plus education loan okay okay cost of attendance is equal to private finance plus scholarship plus financial aid and plus education loan okay, okay. which means now if it is equal to these four things it means if i want to make my private finance equal to zero i'll have to depend on the other three elements absolutely and hindustan mein hame education loan lena acha nahi lagta ya koi bhi tarah ka loan lena acha nahi lagta absolutely so if i want to make that zero yeah. then i'll have to focus on the scholarship and the financial aid okay mm. now these are two topics that one should read about whenever you are approaching a university to mm. give you a small example i mentioned leiden university in, which is in netherlands now leiden university has a scholarship called the holland scholarship and yeah. every child international or a netherland uh, citizen is eligible for that scholarship and it's immediately like the fees at leiden could be ranging anywhere between 10000 to a little more than that okay. euros yeah okay it's roughly touching around 10 lakh rupees for example with a holland scholarship you can bring it down to 5 5000 euros straight away which okay. is frankly lesser than any college that you could in have india to, even in india yes so my point is that where no i i'm not inventing this information it's out there if you go and google it right away you'll find it but the point is the moment we don't get to do this kind of research because obviously we're not thinking in that direction humne soch liya pehle to studying abroad means is expensive college education is expensive even liberal arts See, education in charisha, india is uh, i i you know i would ask a question as a parent right now and not as a moderator um i would ask you if if i want to send somebody you know i want to send my sister or my brother anybody to you know for a broad study yes i have uh, you i can get complete counseling for that particular baby of mine and then i can actually uh, get a college for her right i can get everything very nicely planned but still there is a financial uh, point where we all actually come up with when it comes to you know accommodation or when it comes to uh, you know traveling of that my child you know there are a lot of questions that come up with so you uh, do connection uh, university connection also helps us with accommodation and other facilities for the student everything we are an end to end solution right from selecting of colleges to your final departure i just don't drop you to the airport that's all <laughs> that's something you have to do but but ashi i just want to point out point out also that i'm very notorious for sometimes telling students to stay in india also by the way <laughs> because i really find that uh, it's not about uh, just sending someone Absolutely. to a certain place if if you feel that you know a certain child will be better suited for uh, let's say at undergrad studies right now here or master study also here then you know wait out for the right opportunity also yes. and um and not be in a rush to do it so again when i talked of that attitude of the student you yeah. know i also try to figure out why do you want to go abroad you know why yeah. is it is it for the party scene in london or is it for something else so that is completely has agree here. completely agree and uh, you know that's what even my company we are trying to build in that you know that mm. why why do you have to spend so much uh, you know for something which you can learn in india and it's your parents hardcore money do it when you're ready for it go abroad when you know that you're going to get information you're going to get that exposure you're going to you're ready to experience a different lifestyle do not go on the heck of going that no i have to go abroad and do my graduation Absolutely. or post graduation you need to be mentally prepared that this is my amount of money that i'm supposed to spend this is the kind of uh, you know atmosphere that i need to create around myself 
and i am an individual i have my principles that my family has given me and i have to you know abide by it i cannot just be a rough child there so there are a lot of things that come in the picture when we plan to do this so there'll always be a dilemma about it uh, you know charishra but uh, how do you going to address this like if we you know ask you in a very simple how are you going to solve this entire dilemma like what what is the solution so um this one very simple thing and that is um, for for that moment when you are actually as a family deciding whether i should send my child or not yeah where some blinders where blinders when i say where blinders don't look at your neighbor don't look at your aunt yes. don't look at your uh, you know your the, the other friend in class don't look at anybody you see what you as a family would like to achieve together okay have that conversation with the child but before you do that conversation usually that conversation at undergrad i would encourage that conversation towards the end of 11th okay um for post grad i would encourage that conversation by the beginning of second year college okay, okay? why am i saying that is because from 9th to 11th you have to be in the process of simply growing your child as as just an effective learner yeah just learn 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 so learn about usa learn about canada learn about india learn about singapore learn about every yeah. place under the planet okay yeah so that then when you are ready for that intelligent conversation towards the end of 11th you are in that position to take a call and say okay mom this is the reason i was thinking but frankly you're right these are the things also i should consider yeah. and so he is basically so able to important. picture it he is able to picture himself yes. there that's what it absolutely. is absolutely and sometimes that's where i think the role of a college planner becomes very important absolutely. because then you can sit like a like a little moderator between the family also you know sometimes when yes. i have my counseling sessions nowadays on zoom everybody can come in so there's you know grandfather is also joining and the masi is also joining from dubai and so and so is also coming so it's like one big zoom session that takes place <laughs> great <laughs> yeah, so. great great but then you know everybody knows what what's it all about nobody is waiting at home to hear what did you talk to the counselor all about <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's happening no, no, in one that point. does happen <laughs> another thing that's also very beautifully started happening is that we have a very strong alumni network of university connection students you know okay. so a lot of them who go for undergrad also come back for their post graduate studies like okay. right now i'm working with so many of them for their canada applications and otherwise and sometimes i end up using these students only to say that you know why don't you talk to this kid baba it will be so much <laughs> helpful because there you both come from a similar background absolutely and all of that so it just helps uh because see i i never want to come across as someone as a be all end all at the end of the day university connection as an ecosystem also that we built is an ecosystem of knowledgeable experts yeah uh, these knowledgeable yeah. experts are all there to give you guidance at different levels and also so, let's say you are going to australia to study or you are going to singapore to study or to canada i will make sure that you know there is someone out there to hand hold you there also because we have our oh, own students there oh great oh so great. that that makes a big difference also okay. parents are also comfortable that way um one question that uh, i don't know maybe perhaps you uh, mentioned or maybe i missed it yeah i do want to point out that these are very uncertain times i understand yes. and a lot of children have had to do studies online whether it's absolutely. university studies also absolutely um at this time i definitely would like parents to um read a little more about how universities certain universities have handled this situation much better than some other universities okay this decision has to be also in, considered in the in the entire subset of deciding where to go you know before before yeah. you look at the ranking chart or before you look at what sat score to get and everything else please look at whether these universities have their students what do the other alumni very, have to say a very very important point that you yeah. just mentioned that yes it is important to see how world has actually reacted how colleges have actually reacted yeah. to this particular pandemic um i have a lot of students which i am going to you know sent to you for consultancy definitely oh thank you because thank you. they would need guidance and they would they look up to me which i i don't know so definitely the right person is you so uh, all 
all gone to your side definitely uh it was great i hope everybody who is watching us uh, you know who are going to watch us later um uh, you you know by seeing this video gets to know the right kind of information anything and everything when it regarding your sending your students abroad sending your child abroad Ms. Charles and Arilla from Conne University Connection is the person, your man for the time. And please go and approach her. She'll give you all information that you need. Except yes, only Harvard, or there are more uh, colleges and universities <laughs> on the maps that you should consider. Anything you would like to add, Ms. Narula? We'll be very happy to conclude the session. Uh, no, thank you so much, Ashi. I think you beautifully conducted it. And uh, thank you for your personal endorsement also. I do know that you yourself are doing some phenomenal work in terms of technology certifications. And you, you work with so many organizations, including Microsoft's and the others. Yes. Yeah. You should actually mention your organization also, so people can actually go visit it. Uh, yeah. Yes. So yeah. I am director E-Train India. E-Train India is a company who is a solution providers for Microsoft, Adobe, Autodesk, Apple, HP. Name the company and we are associated with them for their learning programs and certification. So when it comes to sending students abroad, she sends the students abroad and we just try to skill them, upskill them, reskill them. And mm -hmm. so that they, if you want to just learn something, you just want to get certified in something, get it from the direct parent company. You know, you want to learn Excel, learn it from Microsoft, no other company. So that's what we try to build in, try to trying to create one balanced ecosystem for education. Rest. We are giving our hard work mm -hmm. and doing our hard work and giving our best shot. Let's see students get to know that where, you know, is the right information for them. So mm -hmm. I hope Thank this so reaches much, out Ashi. to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that does reach out. And I was, uh, in fact, uh, really impressed by the kind of work you're doing. Because same that note, today, um, technology is at the yeah. cornerstone of growth and development yes. in various sectors and uh, people have realized also that computer science is not just about engineering computer science is Absolutely. linked to so many fields today and Absolutely. i think uh, you're also handling a very smart part of it and Thank you. so in the end i would just tell uh, students i think this message is to students that climb mountains not so that uh, you know the world can see you but so that Absolutely. you can see the world yeah Absolutely. and so it is very very, very, very crucial well that you understand that Yes, very well said. Thank you, Ms. Narula. It was great thank talking you. to you. And thank you, Women Innovator, mm -hmm. for giving us this platform to have a conversation, which That's was lovely, very important. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Women Innovator. And thank you, Ashi. Yeah. Same All right. Good night, everyone. And, uh, but yeah, this is primarily true for undergrad. Okay, for undergrad. Okay. All right. I'll get in touch with you on phone and then. <laughs> yeah, as, yes. we, as we so talked Ashi... about, money is always a problem. <laughs> no, no, money doesn't have to be a problem. Yeah, dreams should be big. Se, se, dream big. Aram, we'll make it happen. Yeah, yeah. true, yeah. true, true. I, I'll go by that word. <laughs> Ashi, I want to introduce you to Ruchika, however. Ruchika is a, is a wonderful, uh, she's, all, she's, a, she's Dr. Ruchika actually, and oh. she's a gynecologist turned nutritionist, and she's wonderful. Oh. She's my nutritionist. Yeah, oh, so great. she's amazing. And Ashi, you've already heard Ruchika. Yeah, so if at Hi. some point yeah. you want to get Thank connected, you guys. Oh, great. She's great. amazing, by Thank the way. Thank you, Sarushila. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great.